Okay, this video is Global Climate IB Geography, Disparities in Exposure to Climate Change Risk and Vulnerability, including variations in people's location, wealth, social differences such as age, gender, and education, and also the idea of risk perception. So first we'll define risk and vulnerability. So risk is any factor that exposes people to danger or impedes or threatens to impede people achieving their goals. Risk can also be viewed as motivation to make changes that find new solutions. Vulnerability can be defined as the propensity or predisposition to be adversely affected. Vulnerability encompasses a variety of concepts including sensitivity or susceptibility to harm and lack of capacity to cope and adapt. Okay, so we're going to think of these terms in, in relation to climate change. So first of all, we're going to think about how people's location, wealth and education might impact their vulnerability and risk to climate change. So vulnerable areas tend to be in LICs and some MICs or in the less developed areas of any nation because they are people who are kind of in lower in less developed areas or in lower income groups are less able to afford the rising food prices that arise from climate change. They are often forced to live in marginal areas because housing and land prices are cheaper there and it is all that they can afford. They are therefore more likely to be affected by floods or droughts and have less capacity to modify their living conditions to adapt to climate change. They are more susceptible to diseases that are spreading into new areas as a response to climate change because their resistance is weakened by their poorer diets and they are unable to afford vaccinations and medical care. They may also face financial difficulties that make migration or relocation due to extreme weather events like typhoons less feasible. Okay, and now we're going to think about why age might be a factor that contributes to varying risk and vulnerability to climate change. So, usually those who are elderly tend to suffer more from the impacts of climate change. They have frail bodies due to aging and they struggle to cope with the stresses of heat waves and increased pollutant and vector-borne diseases that accompany climate change. As people age, they are, more, they are less likely to be actively involved in the workforce and therefore are more likely to lack the financial resources to adapt to the impacts of climate change such as rising food prices, medical conditions and relocation. Moreover, there may be impacts such as social differences like gender. So typically women are more adversely affected by climate change in terms of their risk and vulnerability as women tend to earn lower incomes than men and, and are in turn more impoverished overall. They are more likely to be employed as subsistence food producers who do not earn an income from their work and must try and cope with the changing temperature and rainfall patterns with few financial resources to assist. In developing countries, women often have little to no control of family finances and assets and therefore less influence and control over decisions that affect the whole family. Women are also usually underrepresented in community politics and therefore have little influence on decisions that may help adaptation to the impacts of climate change. And women who are pregnant can usually experience a weakened immune system to diseases such as malaria which are expected to increase the preval in prevalence due to climate change. Physiological changes such as exhaled breath and heat dissipation make them more attractive to malarial mosquitoes also. Carrying firewood and water is seen as women's work in many low-income countries. As climate change degrades vegetation cover in some semi-arid environments, they must walk ever-increasing distances in to find enough fuel wood for their needs. Similarly, as streams dry up and groundwater is lowered, the laborious work of water collection becomes more burdensome and this is typically a role of women in many developing and less developed countries. Oops. Okay, and now we're going to think of the idea of risk perception. Okay, so basically risk is composed of hazard, vulnerability and exposure all contributing to risk. And as you can see here, factors impacting risk, hazard, the dangers, exposure, property investments, economic value, vulnerability, the potential for people and nature to be harmed. So here are the factors that may be able to reduce risk. Um, I'm not going to read over all of them, but these are just um, kind of strategies to reduce climate change risk and kind of take into account all of these different factors. Okay, and now we have the final part of the kind of idea of risk which is climate ch oops climate change risk index also known as ccvi 
Okay, so this was developed by Maplecroft, a consultancy firm that specializes in identifying global risks. The CCRI, CCRI, that was VI. One second. The CCVI is a composite indicator that combines three simpler composite indices, so Climate Change Exposure Index, Climate Change Sensitivity Index, and Climate Change Adaptive Capacity Index. So these are all factors that we kind of have touched on. So the exposure to climate related natural disasters by examining these kind of factors that may impact um, the kind of prevalence of a natural disaster population patterns, economic development, agricultural dependency, so how the economy and society is and how that might impact their sensitivity to climate change. Then finally, their future vulnerability through examining government's capacity to adapt to the country's policies, structures and infrastructure to combat climate change and manage disasters. So it's basically just how is a country gonna gonna exist in terms of the in like a situation of more climate change impacts. Scores are given on a scale of 1 to 10, and 10 is the highest in terms of resistance to the impacts of climate change, and 0 means it has a very minimal resistance to climate change, and thus it's highly vulnerable.